So we are going to create a beach towel. And I have some reference images already here. Um, yeah, one important thing that you can see here is that we have a nice sandy beach. And then we have our uh, beach towel on top of here with some nice folds in here, which we can uh, recreate with Blender's cloth simulation. And then if you look at here, we can see this is gonna be more in the end of the tutorial, but we have actually two particle systems, which is some higher, some longer length of uh, hairs and some shorter ones. Um, the shorter ones are kind of optional, but I like it. And uh, that's why we are of course gonna also go over that. But let's first just go into Blender and we're going to delete this default cube. Now we can add a plane and we're gonna scale this up by four and create another plane. I'm gonna move this plane a little bit up and scale it around X axis for two. Now we can see that we have a little bit of an elongated rectangular shape, which is more yeah, kind of the shape which a beach towel would have. We can hide this and just focus upon our uh, beach. So you can rename this as well, beach or sand, whatever you want. And what I want to do here is I want to make sure we have some displacement in here. Otherwise, the towel just will just fall on something flat and will also be flat. It just, uh, yeah, doesn't really look like a beach, right? So what we're going to do is uh, go in here and add a displacement modifier. And uh, we need to add a texture. So you can just click on new. Now, if you go into the texture properties, you can open a certain texture, right? So I'm going to sand. And I'm going to open the displacement texture. So nothing is really displacing here. And that is because we only are working with a yeah, very limited amount of uh, geometry. If we actually are going to subdivide this a few times. Now you can see that we actually do have the displacement which uh, we want. The displacement and the strength is a little bit too high. So I would like to put this down to point... 0, 07 maybe um, something like this would already work great i'm gonna give this a shade smooth and i do realize that this detail is not very like high end right so what i would like to do is to create some more detail and that is add a modifier subdivision surface and actually put this above our displacement modifier you can see that if i go up in our viewport that we get uh, yeah, way more realistic results. And I do not really want to do this in the viewport. We can always do it in the render, but otherwise it's just gonna yeah, be a little bit heavy on our computers and we do not want that. So I'm gonna keep the viewport at one. Now we can also give this some materials if we, if we would like. So go to shading, click on new. This is gonna be our beach. And um, just grab your image texture, color goes to the base color, and this is going to be our sand. We also have specular, and of course a, a roughness. And last but for sure not least, that is going to be our normal map. So a normal map. And because this color doesn't like match up this color, right? We have uh, from yellow, we go to purple. We need to put a normal map node in between here. Now you can see that this color goes into this and then uh, we go from purple to purple. So now it's good. We can just put this to non-color data and this creates the material that we want. And yeah, that's kind of it for the beach. So now we can start to simulate our towel. Let's also rename this beach towel or just towel, whatever you want. And we want to give this a cloth simulation. The only problem is when we subdivide this to create a more realistic cloth simulation, we have some of these rectangular faces. This is not what we want. Um, we want a very nice and even geometry all over to make sure our details will also be nice and even. So what I want to do is just create one edge loop here in the middle and then create our subdivisions, right? So around here will be okay. And now we can go into our modifiers and add a cloth simulation. So here we have our physics properties and here you can see all the settings that we have. If you go here into your layout, we can see that we also have a timeline and you can of course play this. So right now it will just fall through here because 
this beach does not have any collisions. If you select the beach and go into your physics properties, you can actually put on a collision modifier. And this also has some options, but we're not going to worry with those. So if you play it again, you can see that now it collides with the beach. Very, very cool. The only thing is I want to use a bit of a different preset. So if you go to cloth, if you look here on the right, you have some cloth presets. And I want to put this to denim. You can see that a lot of these things changed. Steps went up. We also have more tension, uh, shear and compression, all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, this creates a little bit more of a realistic towel, let's say. So if you want to render this, let's say if you want to bake this, you go into cache and you want to bake it, right? Make sure you put the end a little bit lower because there's no need to bake it all the way to 250 frames. So I'm going to put this at 30 and then start my bake. As you can see, this goes quite fast. If you want a better result, so let's say this is the result that we have right now. If you would like um, a little bit more realistic, you can always try to add some more subdivisions in here. What I also like to do is if we look at a frame zero, by the way, if you want to change anything now, you need to delete the bake first and then bake again. But let's say you're on the beach and you want to put a towel down. What do you do? Normally, you do not really stand here with two people, pull it straight and then put it down, right? Most, most of the time you just flap it out. So what we do here is we're just going to add some randomness in this um, here. And then I start to bake again. I like to do it this way. It's, it seems a little bit more organic, seems a little bit more, you know, what would happen in real life instead of it just being super flat and just being thrown down. So, yeah, this is just really being thrown down here. And um, it doesn't change a lot, but I like to think that it changed a little bit. Maybe this went a little bit higher. And um, of course, we can also go, as I said, uh, higher in the subdivisions. But let's make sure it has a shade smooth. Um, I'm going to hide the beach for right now. And I want to look at the materials that we can create for this. So go into shading again. And we are going to create a new material for our towel. So let's uh, rename this towel stripes or striped and I want to get rid of the principal shader and just create a image texture okay this texture is going to be this stripe texture that we have here and I want to use a diffuse shader and put this color into this color and then a BSDF into here so here we have our texture right I kind of want to select this texture inside the UV editing and then rotate this for 90 degrees. Now, if we go back to shading, you can see that we have nice and elongated stripes, which, yeah, that was kind of what I was looking for. So what can we do with this? Well, we actually need to make it look a little bit more like a, a fabric, right? And you can do this with a velvet shader. But if you look now at velvet, you can see that we have nothing. This has to do with our render engine. Right now, we are in EV, but EV doesn't really support velvet shading. So we go here into cycles, and now our node will be uh, just down here if you look for velvet, and we can put it in. Very, very cool. So I want to mix these up, so mix shader. And right now you can see that the velvet and the diffuse have been mixed, but I do not want it just to be you know white all the way around i want it to be just like a normal cloth or fabric would do and that is it being on a certain amount of angle that we look at right so a lot of times when you look at um, some cloth let's look at a couch maybe couch you will see that uh, more where the light will shine we get some of these brighter values and that has to do with the, yeah, here you can see it very good, right? So here we can see that, yeah, all of these hairs, like small hairs are like kind of reflecting this uh, light to us. And that creates this kind of velvety look. So that's also what we want to do here. So if you go to Fresnel, put this into the fact, and now it works with the index of refraction. And you can see that now only at certain amount of uh, like an angle, we will get these wider values. 
Uh, you can put this even up. Let's put it at two to get it a little bit more extreme. But um, it already looks more and more soft. I do not really like the fact that it's only white, right? I would like just these values of this particular texture that we have here to be a little bit brighter instead of it all just being mixed with white. So how we're going to do that, I'm going to add a mix RGB, put this color into the color one, and then this color is going to be all the way white. And then we're going to put this color into this color. So now instead of it just being a white on top, it will actually be a mix of white and um, this texture, right? Now, I would also like to add a translucent shader. Oh, not transparent. And I'm going to do the same as this one. I'm going to mix it. So color goes into here. This one is going to be all the way black though. And the fact can go a bit up. So 0.9, something like that. This color goes into the color of the translucent and we're going to add the shader. So use add shader instead of mix shader. And this is going to be added. Okay. So that is our material. Um, if we look at our cloth though, we could add some extra detail. I would like to add a solidify modifier here to make it look a little bit more thick. And we can always add a subdivision surface, right? To make it a bit more smooth and uh, yeah, look more realistic, let's say. So now we kind of want to add a particle system. We want to add hair. And you can see that it doesn't really do what we want it to do. The hairs just go everywhere. First thing that you can do is you can apply the scale. And now I think it's time to apply some of our modifiers. So our cloth is the first one, but we kind of want to, you know, apply it. Then the solidify we can apply. And um, I like to keep the subdivision surface on here. And I think that will be fine. So now we can go back to our particle properties and actually play around with these settings. So I like to put it at advanced already. And I want to think about the number. So the number should be quite high because we want some, you know, some realistic uh, amount of uh, fabric on top of here. So I would already think about around a million, maybe 500,000. But we should first go to our viewport display and put this amount, uh, like this percentage lower. What does this do? Well, now we have 100%. So now the viewport will show a thousand of these hairs. But you can, you can imagine if we put this at a million, that a million might be a little bit much for our computer to handle. So if we actually put this at way lower, let's say 10 or even 5%, now it will only show 5% of the number here inside of a viewport. When you render it, it will show the normal number, of course. So if you now put this to a million, so I add just three zeros, you can see that even now it looks already, you know, very, very full. <laughs> so what you can do here is you can even put this lower if you would like to. Uh, but if your computer can handle it, then just play around with this hair length. So 0 0.007, something like that, would be way better for this amount of, um, for this kind of towel, I would say. The particles that we have here, these splines, are very straight. And it doesn't really look soft or anything like that. So I would like to go to physics and play a little bit around with this brownian. So maybe 0 0.001 or 2. And you can see that now we have a little bit of a curve to all of these splines, right? These hairs. And this will, yeah, make it look way more soft. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what we want. You can also put it at 0, 0, 002. The one thing that you got to keep in mind that Brownian can also change some of the height. So sometimes you also need to change the hair length if you change the Brownian as well. And now the last thing, we need to go here into the hair shape because how it's normally shaped is like a normal hair and that will be a little bit thicker at the root and then it goes all the way to a very very thin which is even zero right at the tip and this doesn't really make sense for our towel because we want these just an even thickness so maybe put them both at 0.3 so the diameter root and the tip at 0.3 meter 
awesome. So I think it's time for a test render. If you click on zero, go here into your view and go lock camera to view, you can zoom a little bit in and start to render. So F12 will render it, of course. And here we can see the end result and um, it looks okay. I think this hair is a little bit too long and that yeah has to do with the brownian, right? So you remember when I said I put the brownian a little bit up, that's totally fine. It creates some, yeah, you know, some randomness, but then most of the time we also have to change the hair length to make it look a little bit more um, like what we want. So I'm gonna put this a bit down. And right now I would already be happy with, you know, the hairs, right? So our particle system. And we've talked about different kinds of height here for our um, towel. And we can do this. It's not really hard, but it's kind of time consuming. But uh, let's just get into it. And what you want to do is you want to just go into your vertex groups, go here into edit mode and create a vertex group and then rename it for a uh, stripe. Striped, stripes, whatever fits for you. So here we want to assign uh, which ones we want to have the stripes on, right? So I want to, I'm just gonna hide these parts here, these ones as well, and then of course, these here. You can assign these vertices to this group. So now if I deselect them, and then click on select, you will be able to see that now we just select everything that we've just selected, let's say. So this kind of works the same for the next one that we're going to make. This is going to be, let's just do it blue or short hair, whatever. What we want to do now is we want to select everything, click on stripes and deselect it, right? So now only the parts which we want to have the shorter hair or the blue on top, um, we can assign these vertices to. So here we have stripes and we have blue. Awesome. So now what you can essentially do is you can go into your particle properties. And for this particle system that we have right here, which are the stripes, right? So stripes, we can go to vertex groups and actually assign the density and length here. So uh, this is stripes and also the length will be stripes. Now, we want to duplicate this whole particle system. So here, and this should be blue, right? So first we're gonna click on plus here to also create a new particle system. And one of these should be the stripes zero. So I want this top one to be just the stripes. And then this bottom ones, I want to do the stripes zero, zero, one, which I'm gonna rename to blue. So now, when we go back here into this vertex groups, this density is actually going to be the blue, right? Blue and blue. So what you can also see is that these here are way more dense than this because these hairs here are just all over the place and this is just a smaller, you know, part. So what I want to do here is I want to make sure this number is a little bit lower. So I'm going to do... Um, 300 thousands instead of a million and this will for sure also help us with uh, you know our memory of our computer this hair length of this blue one right needs to be lower so i'm gonna put it at maybe zero zero two or three and yeah so now we have the shorter one and the longer one the only problem that we have is that the material is still the same and i would like it to be totally blue it's very simple. You can just duplicate this material here, the towel stripes, and then uh, rename this to towel blue. Go into your material properties and actually create a new material here. The first one is going to be the towel stripes and the second one is going to be towel blue. Now, of course, the towel blue is still the same material because we didn't change anything here. And it's actually super simple to change. So I'm just going to do RGB and I want to color pick this blue color here. Now, instead of this image here, I'm going to put the RGB into all of these colors. So color, color, and then uh, this one. So 
so now we can see that this material has changed and we need to apply it to these uh, vertex groups right so if we go into our edit mode you can see that you can assign a certain material so if we just select the blue click on select go back to our material and assign it to the tall blue here we can see that we have a nice and blue material there is one thing though that is not changed and that is the hairs on top so if I go to edit mode you can see that this is still the same this has nothing to do with this uh, material here this actually has to do with the particle system so if you go to the blue particle system you can go into render and change the material towel stripes to towel blue and now everything should be fine uh, make sure you also save this of course and one tip if you're a little bit you know more advanced what you want to do is you want, kind of want to hide all the hairs here underneath you can of course also do this with the vertex groups right so if you have a certain amount of fur like uh, so if you have this vertex group here select you can kind of deselect all this bottom part because those are you know hairs that you're not going to see and they're just being rendered which is a lot and I didn't really want to say that to everyone that's already, you know, has quit right now because most of the time those are beginners that just want to do a tutorial and just to learn and that's totally fine. But if you're a little bit further, you want to think about these kinds of things because having not to, to render this will really help you in also bigger scenes and all of that. So uh, yeah, just try to hide all of the ones that you cannot see. And um, this should essentially be it. The only last thing that I did is I did not really like this lamp. So I put this to a sun. Also use nodes. And I wanted to create some extra shadows, right? Because we have some of these, you know, uh, folds and bumps in here. And I wanted to accentuate that with the lighting that we have. So I think I put the lighting somewhere here. Um, it's a sun. So I put it uh, like a bit orange, you know, a nice and warm color put the strength a bit up and then of course I also used a environment texture so if you go to world and look for environment texture color goes into the color open you can open this one uh, also you can get this at the download uh, file or you can go to HRI Haven for your own one click on open and then um, I put this I think a bit lower so 0.3 something like that now you can always uh, move this one a little bit backwards and start to render your scene i hope you guys learned from this and i'll see you guys in the next one